it has two main positions of function, pronation and supination. We need a little bit of both. Pronation is where the foot becomes a adapter. Okay, think about caveman times when we didn't wear shoes, right? And we're walking around on uneven surfaces and rocks and dirt and twigs and things like that. The foot collapses to accommodate for the surface, pronation. Too much of that, and then we can't propel ourselves. Supination, opposite. Foot becomes a rigid lever to push us forward so we can propel ourselves. Some pronation is normal, some supination is normal. As I hit the ground, I want to pronate. I need some shock absorption. It's one of the three shock absorbing mechanisms we have. As I go to push off, I need to supinate. That foot needs to become rigid. If the foot stays over pronated, I'm trying to push off something that's not a good lever. Not going to work. So if I can't get the power from the foot, I've got to get it north of the foot. The ankle, the knee, the hip, someplace else. Possibly even the shoulder. Okay? If the foot's too rigid, now I have no shock absorption. And that can create a problem. So I'm either going to have to give them a lot of cushioning maybe in that shoe or potentially because cushioning is sort of one of those myth things, teach them maybe how to walk a little bit better. And that's something we talk about in uh, level three courses. So, so far, so good. 